Returns probably can't stay as high as, as they have been the last few years. Not only is it a fragmented project, it's to find the right people. Two thousand and five Christian Wakefield Helian Baker ranking by survey of business people as the number one city in Europe. London clearly at the forefront. Ten years ago, we were all very worried about Frankfurt as a financial services sector. That worry was perhaps misplaced. But of course, the competition doesn't come from Europe. The competition comes from the States. But you'll have picked up from the Bloomberg Schumer report that the States is extremely worried about the competition presented by London in terms of financial services. Right now, US is bigger than the whole of Europe um, in terms of its financial services sector, but businesses are never about the absolute profit of turnover, sorry, absolute turnover or absolute profit. It's always about growth. And the statistics here show that the rate of growth is stronger in Europe and much stronger in the UK, and that is why there are these concerns from New York. And you can see here the growth in the financial services workforce in London now pretty much matching that in New York, and New York shrinking a bit and London growing. And that's a quote from one of the um, chief executives of the financial services businesses who were interviewed as part of that report. And there is no doubt what that conclusion was. And what drives that? These are the factors. There, was a, there were probably 20, 20 key questions in the survey. And these were the ones that were ranked as most important in terms of deciding where you locate. And you can see that where London wins out is all about regulation and a fair um, legal system that people have confidence in working in terms of commercial disputes. Interestingly, availability of professional workers is stronger in New York. And we're now spending a lot more of our time on investor relations in New York with the US shareholder base. And I have to say, they are monstrously impressive. So that side is much more evenly balanced, but it's very much around regulation and the legal system, which is giving us our current advantage. Now, that survey is all about the financial services sector. Um, London draws a wider range of business, and here, uh, a survey from Think London, whose job is to attract people to London, there is a range of statistics, and I'm not going to read them out. I'm going to let you just go through them. But what they show is how important the international dimension is to London, but equally how successful those businesses have been who come to London. So it's good for us, it's good for the businesses who come to London. Now we get very, very political. Because, let's take the two left-hand bars. London represents 12.5% of the UK population, but gets 14% of public spending. Now remember, it's one vote, one person. So democracy in the UK says, why is it that London gets all this public spending? But of course the issue is, it's a great investment, London has the highest level of productivity in any city in Europe, and I certainly believe it's the duty of the UK government to take advantage of that and not to have it suppressed by um, lack of infrastructure facilities and congestion. There is also a really interesting role that London plays with the rest of the UK in terms of skills and talent. London is a net exporter of people to the rest of the UK. So there is migration from London to the rest of the UK. But when you break it down by age, it's a very different picture. You get young people coming from the rest of the UK to get training, and then as their careers mature, 
many of them move outside London. So that's a very healthy symbiotic relationship between London and the rest of the UK. And there's some work being done in a report which I chaired, um, the, the production of called Keeping the UK Competitive, which shows that if we do make investment in London and we grow GDP and we grow employment, we will also get about a one-to-one -one match with employment outside London. The interesting thing about this slide is if you look at the assets under management on the bottom right side, uh, that you can see the growing uh, significance of the UK to our business as the, the light blue uh, wedge is starting to open up a little bit. Uh, and as we look forward in terms of what we're doing in the UK, um, we forecast that about a third of our business will be in the UK um, as we develop the pipeline that we currently have. Um, and uh, a market cap uh, at the moment is about £15 billion. Pounds. Just to sort of flick over a few of the current projects we're doing around the world. I mentioned San Francisco in the top left, uh, and that's the, uh, the largest Bloomingdale store outside uh, on the west coast of the US together with a big Nordstrom store there. We've just opened trading very well. Um, over in Australia, uh, Chermside in Brisbane, very fast growing part of Australia, Century City, which some of you might know, um, an outdoor food dining experience that's recently been refurbished and Bondi Junction in Sydney, which uh, we opened a couple of years ago, and has a lot of similarities to what we're talking about over at um, uh, White City. In terms of uh, the UK, just from history there, we've got uh, seven centres at the moment, three regeneration schemes, uh, and as I mentioned, at the moment, about 3.8 billion of assets that are pretty well spread around the, around the UK. Virtually everything we do in the UK is uh, regeneration. I think, in fact, the Regeneration magazine last week pointed out we're the largest regeneration developer in the UK. And this project up in Derby, we will open this Christmas. Uh, it's the first project we bring to the market in the UK. Uh, I think we're virtually fully leased at the moment. We are designing and building it ourselves, and we're six months ahead of time. And uh, we look forward very much to opening that uh, as getting some sort of new product on the ground. and You can see the building on the left coming to shape, a bit of a shot inside the mall some time ago. The bottom right is uh, an entertainment precinct, uh, and on the left was one of the earlier images. You probably know that uh, we came into the, uh, these projects via the Chelsfield acquisition that we made, I think it was about 2003, uh, and maybe not to delve too much into planning because we pretty well inherited planning consents. We didn't have to go through the process of Section 106, etc., um, and uh, we're pretty well able to get into the delivery side. But there were many other challenges to deal with, particularly, as you know, in uh, White City. Um, I mean, one of the first things that we needed to do was redesign the scheme, uh, make many changes to it, which we've done. Uh, the project was on site, it was under construction, and always difficult to make changes on the run, but that's what we've been doing. Uh, we've secured new planning approvals. We've also um, recently taken over the construction contract for Multiplex, who were the builder, and I think that was back in August last year. So we actually are now the design and construction contractor on that project, which is consistent with what we do um, globally on the 28 or so projects that we're currently working on. The scheme's all about regeneration. Um, we're spending pretty close to £200 million on new stations. There's a new station coming uh, at the uh, southeast corner there, West London Line Station, which will open uh, before this Christmas and that will open up the north-south route uh, on the property. And then there's a new station for the Hammersmith and City line, uh, and there's a refurbished Shepherd's Bush station as well. There's two new bus interchanges. And then I think really the opportunity comes working together with the consortium to the north um, to be able to grow the scheme and, and, and complete the regeneration moving through from Shepherd's Bush Green through the scheme and, and to the north and picking up on all those public transport links. So there's an opportunity for thousands and thousands of homes to come into that area of town and to really build up around the nodes that are being created in terms of the retail and the uh, public transport. Moving on to Stratford, obviously a major scheme. Uh, we're moving forward now. We plan to be on site uh, for Christmas this year or early next year to make the timetable of an Easter opening uh, uh, before the Olympics. John Lewis and Waitrose have committed to the scheme and uh, we've actually started doing some infrastructure works on the site in terms of uh, getting, getting ready to go. We also uh, have a very high target in terms of uh, the sustainability side of the scheme. I think it will be quite unique from what's been seen before and 
Um, and, and obviously all of these major schemes need to take a leadership position. But there are some very aggressive targets in terms of carbon reduction, sustainability, um, power generation, etc. that the scheme will, will embrace.